Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Experience Kills. I am your host Ben and I'm not saying it's an exciting one this time because we're looking at a sport that doesn't get covered that often in video games and with me today, my one and only co-host, it's Richard. Hello. Hey Richard, how you doing? I'm alright. I'm being subdued because we're like, we're, this, this is like, uh, it's in the crucible. Oh yes, it's quiet now, and uh, he's stepping up to take his shot. It's Snooker 19. That's right, we're looking at... Did you like, did you like that? It's yeah. Snooker 19 um, by Lab42 and Ripstone Games. Um, basically, it's a very small British production in general. Both Lab42 and Ripstone are quite small British sort of indie publishing and development houses. And I love looking at games by those kind of guys. And so I was quite excited in a strange way to look at a snooker game in 2018. And the first one in nearly 10 years to actually have the official licensing for, you know, the players and the venues and the championships. So that, that was like, oh, OK, these are going to be a bunch of people. I literally don't know who any of them are except maybe Ronnie O'Sullivan and that's basically it yeah. what about you Richard do you have any snooker knowledge going into this not a vast amount um I do sorry to break it to you but pun intended <laughs> you, you, you did say it was 2018 it's of, of course 2019 did I say 2018 oh you wow, did. okay oh, just brilliant. in case brilliant. that dates this um video slash audio for anyone listening it is new honest yeah, it didn't come out last year. <laughs> like, I've travelled back in time to play this game that came out last year. That's that's what we do here at Experience Kills. Um, but yeah, this this is a snooker game. And my, my knowledge of snooker is probably the best part of 20 years out of date. Because the last time I probably watched snooker was whenever it was put on BBC Two at 6 o'clock instead of one of the sci-fi shows that I'd want to be watching. So I'd end up watching snooker instead. Do you remember those days? I never really watched snooker apart from an experimental period when I tried to follow it in black and white. That's a that's a bit of a rush. Is that true? Yes. You you why? What why? I'm really confused. Um it just adds to the challenge. It adds to the challenge. Like if you right. if you can't quite see what's going on, it's like a hard mode, right? So <laughs> if <laughs> It adds to the jeopardy because you've got to wait for the announcement to see if they've potted what they're supposed to have potted. Were you, were you betting on it as well or something? Like, uh, well, no, because this isn't really the most sociable of activities. Or obviously, it's just me on my own. <laughs> 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 but yeah, I've, I've done that. I've done that a few times. I recommend it. Try it out. That's really strange, um, <laughs> but I kind of love it. Um, so let, let's get into sort of what Snooker Nineteen is. It, in many ways, is exactly what you'd expect from a snooker game. So the core mechanics of aiming, you know, when you you can like line up your your shots and that you can see the um, the way in which the balls are going to bounce off of each other and what directions they're going to go in, which you can use to aim them and like you know try and work out the different trajectories and things like that. You've got control on the spin on the cue ball. You've got a power meter. Uh, you know, it's exactly what you'd expect from that kind of game. And then the modes again are pretty standard. You have a well challenged championship mode which you can play as one of the pros or one of the up-and-coming talents uh, and then you go through a series of uh, different types of matches and stuff but they all basically the same thing which is playing snooker uh, in either three frames or a lot more depending on how much you want to make it realistic to the real experience and I don't know if you've ever watched snooker I couldn't tell you exactly off the top of my head how many game how many frames a game can go to but I know they play snooker matches over multiple days um, so, you know, if you really want that sim experience, you could play it that, you know, in that length of time for one match. I, however, didn't really engage with it in that way. In addition to the championship mode, you've got an online multiplayer mode. And I'll be honest with you, I tried to make that work quite a few times and I was able to find any matches. Now, that might have been the times of day I was trying to match make. Um, it's not, there's no lobby system. It's just a quick match option uh, on the main menu. And I couldn't get a single multiplayer game. So I wasn't able to test that. Uh, I was, however, able to test local multiplayer, which worked as you'd expect. It's a pass the controller type situation yeah. um, because it's snooker and you take turns, and that's very easy to do, and that works well. Um, I think the things to bear in mind with that, because of the, this game with the licenses, is that you have real locations where, where snooker really takes place in the real championships, which is nice if you're a, an avid snooker you know, watcher, you're going to see that, and you're going to also see a lot of players that you recognize. Um, however, when I was going through the players, 
I didn't really recognize any of them except Ronnie <laughs> O'Sullivan. Uh, and I was just looking at their crazy nicknames. So when I chose a pro to play as, I just I picked the most ridiculous one I could find. And there are some brilliant ones in there. Uh, some that stand out was this guy who was like a Korean snooker player, I believe. And his nickname was X Factor. And I was like, <laughs> that's pretty wow. baller. Snooker names have moved on. I, d I yeah. don't remember any exciting snooker names. There was Jimmy Whirlwind White, wasn't there, back in 80, the 80s? Wasn't there Hurricane Higgins as well? Hurricane Higgins. Yeah. And Boring Steve Davis was my favourite. <laughs> is, that, is that what just you called him? I don't know if that was his official nickname. That was like a popular name for Steve Davis, Boring Brilliant. Steve Davis. Brilliant. Um, yeah, so like, you know, we're dating ourselves brilliantly here. We're going back at, le at least 20 years yeah. on, our, on our snooker playing <laughs> knowledge, which is fantastic. Uh, I mean, I noticed a few of the players I recognised on the cover of the game. There were like some like hairdos. I was like, I kind of recognise that guy, but I, I couldn't tell you his name. Um, so that was that's my knowledge. I will say some of the the character models are haunting in this game especially when they you know you line up a shot and when you when you sort of like play the shot it cuts to a more cinematic view of it being taken sometimes mm -hmm. and you can just see these dead eyes staring at you over the queue you know looking looking at you through you through into your soul um so sometimes the character models are a little unnerving um but it's you know the likenesses are fairly good i mean you get to see a lot, a lot of the pictures of the players look like you know in real life um before seeing them in the game and yeah they're close enough they're close enough um, but yeah, it's uh, it is what you'd expect, though. You know, it is a snooker game in which you play snooker, a lot of snooker. There aren't a huge amount of modes. I mentioned basically what it is. The multiplayer local mode is also a single player mode in which you can just play against the AI in various different ways. But predominantly, you're going to be playing through the championship. And then there's that multiplayer mode if you can get it to work. Um, there are some trick shot type quick game options, but nothing particularly in depth. I mean, this game isn't being brought out at a full price. It's kind of a budget price point, um, which sort of reflects the amount of stuff included in it and i think that's not bad considering that you know they've obviously paid for the license for this game to develop it um and stuff like that so that's not bad at all um but yeah anything you wanted to know richard about snooker 19. i'm more interested in how the um the players themselves change the experience because my they don't do they not at all not that i can tell no so i mean there's a general difficulty settings like easy medium and hard yeah. but the players themselves they don't bring any like personality or well, special moves. quirks to it no special moves <laughs> what's a snooker special move gonna be he does a little he does it on one foot <laughs> puts, puts his right leg on the table <laughs> oh he's doing it behind the back check it out he's got the cue behind his back typical signature move from backhanding bill i mean oh, like he's he's potted through his legs <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there are probably arcade snooker games. I, I feel like these games would all be made in Japan, by the way. Mm. Um, if there was like quirky arcade snooker games, and, and, but the, but they don't really exist to my knowledge. But maybe they should. Mm. Um, one thing I know know as well. I, I believe they have like official commentary on this as well, but it's incredibly repetitive. Like commentary in sports games is normally bad. But this was particularly bad. Like in the same frame, you'd get multiple repeated lines of dialogue. Um, it was nice that they attempted it, I suppose, but it doesn't add anything to the experience at all. If anything, it's kind of like so corny, it sort of just makes you groan at times. Like, the, oh, he's missed that one. Oh, that was an easy shot. He's completely unforced error on that. Things to that nature. And you just hear it again and again and again. Um, yeah, I mean, That's I basically... But then snooker games can feel really sterile, can't they? So without any commentary, then maybe that would be worse. I think I think it's it's a, it's a, tri a tricky proposition. You can't make snooker exciting. If you do, it wouldn't be snooker. I mean, I'm not trying to be horrible. It's just a case of this is two men that walk around a table hitting balls into holes. That's literally all this is. And it's a good representation of that. The reason I've not talked about the actual core gameplay mechanics that much is because they couldn't really be anything else. Do you know what I mean? It, it, you know, you have the Amy mechanic, the power sort of shot mechanic, yeah. and the spin mechanic, and that's it. No, and I've I've played enough of them to know that they're they're much of a muchness. I mean, some mm. of them might do it slightly better than others in just how 
realistic it looks or you know how easy it is to arrange your shot but you pretty much arrange them in the same way when it comes down to it so mm. So, I mean, the one thing I noticed from playing it, I play quite a, quite a lot of this, actually, because it's quite relaxing as an experience, you know, between open world games and shooters and stuff like that. And I've played a good few hours of this. And one thing I did notice was the importance of power on your shots, because it's tempting to always, even with the light, you know, you've got a nice lined up shot, you want to slam that cue ball as hard as you can and, you know, watch it fly. But actually, it's all about strategically placing the cue ball after the shot. So that's why you'd use spin. That's why you wouldn't necessarily hit everything at full power um, because you want to just line up. You've got to be thinking quite strategically uh, like a game of chess almost and thinking about where you want to position the cue ball so you can get it back on the black, you know, to pay, play for the maximum amount of score on that break. Um, so, you know, all of that does play quite nicely. And one thing I did notice is the weight of the balls felt very realistic. I've played quite a few games of real snooker in my time and, and the balls felt you know on the table as they should they didn't feel too light they weren't zipping around they had that momentum to them you know we when you hit a ball even even if you hit it slowly it can keep rolling for quite a while and you know you can sink a delicate sort of shot and stuff like that using that kind of technique and all of that felt authentic and and felt really good um and i think the presentation in general especially of the balls they look particularly shiny one little thing i liked was if you're taking a high angle shot down onto the cue ball say that you're having because you're resting up against another ball and you need to get on top of it. Uh, sometimes it will leave chalk on the felt, like to show where oh. you've you've hit it and hit it with a bit of a strange angle and you've left a scuff mark or something like that. Yeah. So the felt can actually get sort of messed up as a game progresses, which I thought was a really nice little touch. That's yeah. Cool. yeah. Yeah. So which, I think I think. What have you played it on on Xbox? Is it? Yeah, played on Xbox. So it's yes. on PS4. It's on Switch as well. I wonder if do you know if there's is a it? difference in Switch the Switch version? Oh, I didn't realise it was on Switch. That'd be kind of fun to play on the go, actually. Yeah. Play I a wonder player. if it had like motion control, so you could. <laughs> God, yeah. I really hope not. That would <laughs> suck so much. I know. Um, but you, you oh. want to try it though? Now I've said it. I kind of do. I like the idea of being on the bus. Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> d- trying to trying to do that with the screen like just balanced on my knees or something, you know? Yeah, <laughs> trying to like do snooker motions or yeah, something like, like Higgins in his drinking period. <laughs> It'd be really funny. <laughs> no, I, uh, I yeah, I've enjoyed what it is. It's it's cool that it's licensed. It's cool that it's got all the all the named uh, players in there. Even if I don't know who they are, uh, I think for a small studio of like half a dozen people, it's it's been well enough put together. Um, yeah, the package is what you'd expect. It plays as well as you could hope it to. Uh, yeah, it's a cool little game. That's Snooker 19. I think that brings us to the end, unless you have any other further questions, Richard. No, it's all balls, isn't it? Load of all balls. Oh, I mean, I, li- I mean, you tamed down the puns. There were plenty of puns coming before we started recording, so I'm I'm glad you've, you've reined them in a little bit. <laughs> you've restrained yourself. Well, I've always got to let out one. I'm that sort of <laughs> sort of sort of guy. Sorry. You are. No, that's fine. That's why we're experienced kills with a couple of old men who make bloody awful dad jokes. That's yeah. that's what we're all about here. That's it. <laughs> yeah, right, so that's the more. <laughs> That's the end of another episode of Experience Kills. I hope you enjoyed our discussion of Snooker 19. You can like and subscribe to the video and to the channel. We would really appreciate that. You can find us at Experience Kills on Twitter. You can find me at DIYE Richard. Where can they find you on Twitter? I'm at Colonel Red on Twitter. Fantastic. And you can also make sure you listen to this. If you want to listen to the uh, the video about snooker on the bus, you can do that on iTunes and Spotify or using the Raw RSS feed. All links can be found in the video description. We will be back soon with more exciting snooker related content and, you know, other games, probably. So, bye. Bye.